Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you could process a portrait in Lightroom in less than five minutes. You'll start out with an image that looks like this and end up with an image that looks like this. We're going to be processing this image of my assistant, Courtney. Now I guarantee once you get this down, you'll be able to process any portrait in less than five minutes. I'm probably going to take a little longer than five minutes in this video because I'm going to carefully explain each of my steps. And those steps are actually outlined in my free Lightroom Portrait Retouching eBook. If you're interested in grabbing that eBook, there'll be a link for it in the description below this video. Now, as far as step one is concerned, many of you know I like to crop early in my workflow. So I'm going to crop right away. So I'm going to click on the crop tool and I eventually want to create a borderless 8x10 print. So I'm going to choose a crop that is going to give me that. That would be the 4x5x8x10 by 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 right here. So we'll click that and I'm going to want a vertical uh, crop instead of the horizontal crop we're seeing. So I'm going to hit the X key on the keyboard to flip that so it's now vertical. I'm going to center Courtney more in this in the middle. A little bit too much space at the top so I'm going to pull this down. And I think right there's a nice crop. So I'm going to just click on the crop tool to accept the crop and we're all set with that. Now step two I like to remove blemishes. She really doesn't have any blemishes to speak of. But we'll do that. We'll click on the Spot Removal tool. You're going to want to make sure you're in Heal mode. Keep feathering between 50 and 100 and opacity at 100. And then get it so that center circle on the brush is just a little bit larger than the blemish. You could change the size of the brush, of course, with this slider right here. You could use the bracket keys on your keyboard. Left bracket key makes it smaller, right bracket key larger. Or you could use the center click wheel on the mouse, or if you have an Apple Magic Mouse, you could just drag your finger along the mouse and change the size as well. So we're going to go and we're going to make that center circle just a little bit bigger than the blemish and click once. If you don't like where it's sampled, you could move this uh, sample circle around till you get it on an area that looks acceptable to you. So again, you could just re keep resizing and just click on anything that you think you want to remove. Now typically, in most cases, you're not going to want to remove uh, a mole, something that's permanent. Usually you leave that. Um, quite often you leave that up though to your subject or your model. And sometimes if you're doing work for you know, an ad campaign or something like that, you may be instructed by the art director or whoever's running the campaign that they're going to want the models, let's say, mole removed or something. So you may have to do it. So I think that's good. So we're done with that step of blemish removal. Now the next thing I like to do is soften the skin. And we're going to click on the brush for that. And there's actually two presets for that. You'll see there's soften skin and soften skin light. I prefer soften skin light in most instances. And you'll see when you pick that brush, it automatically pulls texture down to minus 35 and clarity down to minus 15. Now as far as the brush attributes are concerned, you're going to want feathering all the way up, flow and density all the way off, and make sure auto mask is not checked. Then come in and you just kind of brush over her skin. Now you want to avoid her hair, her eyebrows, her eyelashes, and her lips because you want those to be sharp. You just want to soften skin. And you can see it does a pretty good job. And I'll do her hand as well. We'll again resize the brush in the same ways we resize the, the spot removal brush with the bracket keys, the center click wheel, or actual uh, brush size slider that is on the tool attributes. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to get a smaller brush though and get under her eyebrows. Like that. And we'll do a before after. There's before and there's after. 
before yeah i think that's pretty good right there now <clears throat> if you're wondering if you caught everywhere or maybe you made a mistake and went over a spot you didn't want to go over if you go down here in the uh, lower left hand corner you'll see that in the toolbar and by the way if you're not seeing this toolbar hit the t key t key on your keyboard and that will make that two bar toolbar uh, come and go we're going to click right here show the mask overlay and you can see i missed some spots like right in here right in here Oops. and then i made a mistake i went over her eyebrow so <clears throat> what you could do is you could click on the eraser over here or you could hold the alt or option key in alt if you have pc option if you have a mac and as long as you hold that alt or option key in it will keep the erase brush active and you could come in here now and erase it from where you don't want let go of it when you want to go back to the actual skin softening oops i meant to go this way with that oops i keep forgetting to push in the alter option key and then get a little bigger come up here i missed a spot over here but you get the idea right we can come down get the lower part of her neck and the rest of her hand over here of course you want to avoid the clothes as well i didn't mention that so i'm going to turn the overlay off by just clicking on this little chuck mark again and i like that so we're done with softening skin the next step is to whiten teeth and again we're going to use a brush for that so click on new make sure you click on new because if you start moving sliders, it's going to affect the skin right now because we have that brush active. So click on new, then go to the drop down again, and you'll see that there is a uh, teeth whitening brush preset. So we're going to click on that, and you can see for that, it simply brought saturation down and exposure up. Now I want to zoom in on our teeth, but we have the brush active. To zoom in while the brush is active, you want to hold the shift key in, or I'm sorry, the space bar in. Hold the space bar in, and then you could zoom in. And we're just going to then paint on her teeth. And you want to, of course, avoid her lips and gums. Do this very quickly. And of course, you'd probably take your time, go a little more, a little slower when you're doing it. teeth and voila we're good now we're going to zoom back out we're going to hold the space bar in and click again to zoom out and we'll see the before of after of all the brushes before after now if you think that this might be a little too white you could go to the exposure setting and you could just kind of dial it down a little bit because i think it was a little bit too white we'll bring exposure down a bit and i think that's a little more natural looking there's before and there's after so we're done with whitened teeth next i want to enhance the eyes so again we're going to get a brush for that make sure you click on new first then go to the drop down and you'll see iris enhance so we're going to click on that we're going to zoom in again i'm going to hold the space bar in zoom in on this eye right now what we want to do is make uh, again now as far as brush attributes feathering and flow at 100 are good, density at 100. Make sure auto mask is not checked. Then get a brush that's just about the size of your subject's iris. Then you could, of course, resize it to get in other spots. So you just want to paint over the iris. You want to avoid the eye white. And just come in and just get in that iris area there. Now I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to hold the space bar in and click again. And I'm going to do a before after and take a look at it. There's before and there's after. And I like that. Now, if you could come in and readjust things, you may want to bring saturation up a little more. Uh, you may want to add a little more clarity. You just want to avoid giving them marbles, you know, because something that's unrealistic. And bring exposure up a tiny bit more. And I think that looks great right there. There's before and there's after. Now, after I'm done with that, I like to uh, get rid of stray hairs. And typically, I'll get rid of any stray hairs that are in my model's face. And there really aren't any. There are some going off, you know, up top here. 
Um, just for demonstration purposes, I'll show you how to do it. You're going to use the spot removal tool for that. You're most often going to want to be in heel mode. You're going to probably want feathering somewhere a little bit lower, between 50 and 75. You're going to want to get a brush that is just a little bigger than the hair. And then you're just going to paint along this, that flyaway hair. And you may have to often uh, grab it, your sampling area, from a different spot. So you could just do that very easily, like that. And you could go through studiously with each uh, flyaway hair. Now I would recommend that if you're in a controlled situation and you're taking a photo of your model, even if you're not in the studio, if you're in a lifestyle situation in someone's backyard or in the park, try to make sure that your model's hair is not all over the place. Do the best you can to make sure that it's under control and especially unless you want it to be in their face, that it's not in their face and it will save a lot of time. Okay, we're done with that. Now the next thing I like to do is sharpen and that is to just sharpen specific parts of our model's face. We don't want to sharpen the skin because we just softened it. So we want to sharpen their hair, their eyebrows, their eyelashes, and their lips, and sometimes their clothing as well. And to do that, we are going to get a brush. And make sure you're going to click on a new brush. And let's reset it by double clicking on the word effect. So we're resetting everything here. Now, uh, there is the sharpness slider. We'll bring that up. And you could readjust these after you paint it on, and maybe we'll bring clarity up a touch too. There's this new texture slider that I like, and what we'll do is then we'll get a brush that's going to be big enough to do the job, and you want to come in and sharpen, as I mentioned, the hair. And you can see how it's making the hair look a little better. Now you may want to use separate brushes, one for the hair, one for the eyebrows, one for the eyelashes. It's up to you. For this demonstration, I'm just going to use one brush. Come in. Do these eyebrow eyelashes, I'm sorry, real quick. And we'll do her lips. Like this. A lot of times I like to do the lips on their own um, because with the lips, I'll often bring uh, saturation up a little bit to give their lips a little more healthy red look. So I do the hair, the eyebrows, and the eyelashes with one brush, and then I'll do the lips with a different brush. Now that looks maybe a little too crispy, so I'm just going to bring clarity down a bit, texture down a bit. I think that looks pretty good. Now the next thing I often like to do, especially with a model with dark hair, is give their hair highlights. Now in the case of Courtney, she really has highlights already, so I don't have to, but I'm going to just demonstrate it. Uh, to do that, we are going to use another brush. And we're going to get a new brush by clicking on New. Let's reset these settings by double-clicking on the word Effect. And all you want to do is bring exposure up a little bit, like, you know, 0.25 in the case in here. And you could readjust it. So you come in and you just kind of brush over uh, her hair where a highlight probably should be from the lighting that you have. And then you could come in and readjust if you need. So always remember, you could come in and readjust things. So again, we just want a slight amount of highlights to our hair. And I think that looks pretty cool right there. Now this next step, and it's the last step, often doesn't work, but um, it's, it's kind of a tough thing. It depends on the tone of your model's skin and how dark the bags under your model's eyes are. So we're going to get a new brush. We're going to reset all the settings by double clicking on the word effect. And then what I want to do is open up the shadows. And we'll start there. We'll get a brush that's just going to be big enough to go under these darker bags under her eyes. And we're just going to brush. Now you got to be careful. I'm, I'm currently have a flow and density at 100. You may want to turn those down a little bit to begin with. But since I've done this so many times, I'm kind of confident in what I'm doing. So I've brought shadows. I've opened those up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to blacks and I'm going to open that up as well. Now you can see how it's kind of softening. Now you don't want to go too far. It's going to make her look like she's been tanning 
and she's been wearing tanning goggles. So you just want to bring that up enough to soften the bags under her eyes. So I'm going to turn the brushes off. So this will be all the brushes. And you can see there's before and there's after. We've done quite a bit. And really, that's everything. That's how you retouch a portrait using Lightroom. Now, here's before and there's after. Of course, that doesn't include the crop. We did crop also. There's before and there's after. And I think you'll agree, it looks pretty natural. I might have overdone the teeth. I'll probably come back in and uh, redo that. Um, one could argue now the skin, because when I softened it, some of the highlights of the skin are a little too hot. So what I would do is I would go into the basic tab and I would pull some of the highlights down, but not that much, right? Just a little bit. Just a touch. You might want to come into whites. Like that. And the teeth are bothering me, so I would go up to the brush tool. I would uh, click on the pin for the teeth that is, uh, you know, to make that active. Then I'll come over here and I think saturation maybe is a little bit too crazy. Sure. There, I think that's a little better. So that's it. That's how you uh, process a portrait in Lightroom. Now I'm going to go back here because this is bothering me. Let's just put that back. Yeah, that looks better like that, I think. So that's how you process a portrait beginning to end in Lightroom. And trust me, once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to do it in less than five minutes. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.